This episode of On Display is brought to you by Post-It Brand. Find your favorite Post-It products at your local retailer today. I'm saying what people are thinking at the end of the day. All right, guys, I'm really looking forward to this one today. She's a cool mom, an absolute hustler when it comes to business and marketing. And this girl has made quite a name for herself on the latest season of The Real Housewives of New York. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the lovely Cy De Silva with me today. Hi. Hello. Hi, Melissa. So happy it's to be so here. It's so nice to meet you. I haven't met you yet, right? You're one no. of the girls I haven't met yet. Okay. I'm a newbie. I'm the new kid on the block. You're a newbie. Well, you know what? I have met Erin. Yep. And I've met Uba. Erin said nothing but great things about you. And Uba, so like she speaks so highly of everyone. Like she's just the, the world's most positive person. But Erin um, told me she met you and she loved you. Yes. Erin's super, super cool. I love her. We actually did something for, I forget what it was. I think it was Fashion Week. We were doing something with um, E! News and I can't remember, but we did. We did something and I got to meet her and I thought she was really cool. We went out and had like a drink after. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. She is. You know what? She's my speed. I feel like with just a lot of things. So we got along really, really well. It was funny. That's one of the things she said to me. She's like, I feel like I'm a level headed girl on my show. Kind of like you are. <laughs> yeah, she's, We'll she's see. Good. We'll see as it keeps going. She's pretty normal. She's pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. That's how she comes <laughs> off. Um, and Uba was just a doll. First of all, she's just like takes over the room when she walks in. Yeah. I met her at the polo bar restaurant. That's where I met. We have a mutual friend, Nellie, who we both love. So she, um, she was so kind too. And I was like excited to get to meet someone else. Can I just start off with the fact that I'm a fan of New York housewives. I've always been a fan of the previous show and I am now a fan of this show. I was worried how it would be to like reboot, but let me just tell you, I'm a fan. I'm loving it. I feel like it's fresh. It's new. I love the group of ladies. You guys all bring your own little spice and like personality to it. I really think it's taken off. How are you feeling about everything with your new like stardom here? I think it's crazy. I mean, first of all, I'm I'm loving the journey so far. I think it's really great. But at first it was just so the, the reactions were like, you could never be them and you, we, we don't want it. Read the room. And at the same time, it was like, okay, we're not trying to replace anyone. Okay. Right. That's not what's happening here at all. Like, obviously the OGs have paved the way for us. We wouldn't be here without them. Right. So those are really big shoes to fill that we're not trying to fill. We're literally just brand new women on the show. Like, and this is our story. We're not trying to piggyback off anyone else's story. So like I bow down to the OGs. I am an OG housewife fan and I've watched Roni since the very beginning. Um, but now that we're here, I'm, I'm really happy that it's finally out. And I really think that people like it. Obviously we still have our hands full of, you know, a few haters every now and of then. Of course. But- <laughs> Welcome to housewives. First of all, First of all, and I don't know, I forget what celebrity said this, but without haters, you know, let them be your motivators. Let's put it that way. The the girls with the most haters are always the most successful. Keep that in mind also. It's fine. You should welcome them, especially like on a Bravo show. It just comes with the territory. Unfortunately, I'm not like saying it's a positive thing or promoting haters out there, but like. I'm just telling you it, it just, there's, there's always teams and sides and this and that, and it's just out of this world, which we have to appreciate the Bravo fans, right? Because they get so into it. You probably had no idea how I had no clue, no clue. I had no idea like this was going to happen. And I also am someone who takes the train and I'm very like, I grew up in Brooklyn. Like my, my, my everyday flow is very much so, you know, go to the bodega. Like it, it's just, yeah. so when I started getting noticed on a train, I, I was like, are you kidding? I could not believe it. Cause I'm walking around with a hat and stuff like that. And everyone's like, I love you on the show. Or this girl started walking around Zara and she immediately was like, you know, I really don't like everyone on the show. Like she was gossiping with me. And I'm like, wait a minute, girl, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> You're not allowed to gossip with me and say who you like and who you don't. But I feel like you guys also are fighting that 
previous show situation. Right. So it's like, you don't even get to come in as a total new cast with people being warm and welcoming. They're also like, well, where's Ramona and where's Luann and which character are you? You're like, I'm actually none of them. I know this is a whole new show. Right. Like, right. I just didn't want to be myself here. I just want to play me. Yes. Um, at the end of the day. So it's, it's been an amazing journey so far, but you know what? We're still very, very new. We're only five episodes in. Um, I don't think that we have right. hardcore fans. Well, at least I don't think I have hardcore fans right now. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying like the, the, the tipping, the tippy toe of, of the Bravo, Bravo fans right now. So for, first of all, like for people who are not completely familiar with you, Sai, can you describe yourself to my listeners? Who, who are you? Tell us about yourself yes. a little bit. So I am a Afro Latina, um, I'm Puerto Rican girl raised in Brooklyn, um, I am a fashion influencer. I talk about a lot of luxury fashion. I am a mom of two. And um, I, yeah, I grew up in Brooklyn and, and people don't realize that being an influencer is a full-time job. Like this is a real life job and it is something that I do and take very serious. Like I have a team. I am on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. I create social media across all of those, uh, uh, all of those platforms. And soon I'll also be like you, Melissa, and entering into the podcasting world. Um, media is definitely my thing. I I've, I've been in media for the last 10 years. That's how I, you know, pay the bills with media. I, it's something I adore and really, really love to do. And even though I talk a lot about luxury fashion, uh, I have very humble beginnings and I have earned everything that I have. Um, but I'm a around the way girl, like at the end of the day, I'm super down to earth. I don't take myself seriously whatsoever. I'm just, I have a very funny sense of humor. And I just find, I just think of myself as a, as a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker through and through. Right. And so you were actually born in Los Angeles, but you're truly, you were raised here in New York, yeah, right? I've been in New York off and on since I was two. So yeah. got it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, do you think some of those New York instincts really help you like navigate this show? You know what? I have this very carefree personality as in I don't dwell on things. And um, there are a lot of things I just kind of, this sounds kind of bad, but just don't care. <laughs> right. But that's the way you need to have like thick skin yeah. you need to let it roll off. Listen, it, before you even got on the show, if you're just an influencer, right. And you're on social media, you need thick skin for that too. I mean, skin. it's all over the place nowadays. I mean, if there's anything that our kids are going to have, it's going to be thick skin because they've never heard so many negative things. Like we didn't grow up like that. I personally did not grow up with people having such an opportunity to tell me that I was wrong or ugly right. or this or that, or whatever it may be like that opportunity never was available the way it is now. Right. So I feel like if anything, we're all getting thicker skin, like you living in this time. Right. It's crazy. You have to have it right. Cause we grew up in an era where it was like, I had a beeper and you would beat me and I would like, so did I, I. <laughs> hashtag one, four, three, one, four, was... three all day. Like, yeah, I would... it was like one, two, three men. I miss you. I, I miss think. you. Remember hello. Like you had to spell out hello and like flip the beeper around upside so like, down, like upside down. <laughs> it also said like, I want to fuck upside down too. Yes, 100%, 100%. It was definitely like, I remember them trying to do that and flipping it upside down. I mean, and you would have beeper. a paper with like codes on it. So you would know, like we grew up in a different era. So now everything that we do is documented. So it's a completely different era. And you do have to maneuver in a way where you got to let things kind of roll off the shoulder. It's it's like people are stuck behind their computers. I call them keyboard thugs. We have right. so many keyboard thugs running around here saying all kinds of things, but no one would ever have the guts to say that to your face. So, you know, it I, I want to kick the the keyboard thugs ass. Like, so I'm just like, where are you? I, it's like sometimes, sometimes they need it. Every now and then I clap back. Like I get into, the, I, I try not to do it too much because I don't want to give away my energy. But every now and then I get... If you catch me on a bad day, I might clap back. Or or one cocktail in sometimes. Like oh yeah. Well, I I mean I've been doing this for 14 years, so I'm pretty seasoned with that and I stay away. No, I've learned it never ends well. No. So you think you're gonna like change your opinion and be like, 
wait, you're actually wrong about this. You're seeing this wrong. And, blah, blah. and then they can't believe that you answer them. That's first of all. And then they come back even harder sometimes to oh, prove no. their point. And I'm like, I just wasted 20 minutes of my life with somebody who I have no idea where you live or who you are. And I just tried to defend myself and I got nowhere. And that for me, it's usually like if I'm in a, if it's a bad day or like I had a cocktail or something and I just like, <laughs> I'm a little bit more like loose lipped and I happen to read the wrong thing at the wrong time. But my advice to you on that is steer clear. If they're a hater, they're a hater. You're almost never going to change their mind. And if they do change their mind, they'll do it on their own. That's just my okay. advice. Cause okay. I've messed up many times trying to tell them they're wrong. And I'm like, why, why am I, why did I just waste my life? Why did I just do that? It's you pointless, know? right? It's so pointless. All right. I'll stay away, but just yes. as long as they don't hit me on the wrong day. So we're good. Yes. So fall is right around the corner and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered right to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date, then lay back and enjoy your last days of summer knowing that dinner is covered. Get rid of the end of summer blues with HelloFresh. No need to start stressing about how you'll handle it all in the fall because HelloFresh takes care of all the hassle and the planning and delivers all pre-portioned ingredients right to your home. So whipping up a homemade meal is a cinch. This fall, I know you have places to be and standing in the checkout line is definitely not one of them. So leave the meal planning and grocery shopping to HelloFresh. And if you need to add snacks, sides, and anything else to the weekly HelloFresh order, just simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. Guys, you know that things have really kicked into high gear over here for me with Envy, the show, moving Antonio to college. It's football season, everything. HelloFresh has saved me so many times. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 on display and use code 50 on display and you'll get 50% off plus free shipping. That's right. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 on display. Make sure you use code 50 on display for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Do you have a summer anthem? How does this one sound? Summertime and building credits easy. <laughs> That's the song you can be singing all summer long with the Secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, a better way to build credit. As in, you can build your credit scores safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. Plus, there's no annual fee, interest, or credit check to get started. Guys, this Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is seriously awesome. Yes, you heard it right. There's no annual fees. There's no interest charges and there's no credit check. And yes, you can use it anywhere that the Visa credit cards are accepted. And it doesn't stop there with Chime. They also offer a Chime checking account where you can get paid up to two days earlier with a qualifying direct deposit. You can ditch the monthly fees altogether because the Chime checking account has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. We all know how much of a pain those are. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash Melissa. That's Chime.com slash Melissa. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. I mean, now we were talking about like how crazy the fan bases are, right? But I have to ask, what made you want to join the crazy world of reality TV and specifically the Real Housewives, which is a really huge platform for reality? So what made you want to do this? I think at first I was super hesitant about it, but I it really like perked my interest. I think when they said that they wanted to do a reboot. Um, when they said they wanted to cast brand new, diverse, inspirational women who live these aspirational lifestyle and just really show what New York City is. That's right. when I got super interested. And I was like, 
I'm a New Yorker and I could be on this amazing show. Why not? Why wouldn't I want to be a part of this? You know? And I think that's when it came about. And then I also knew that we were going to, that they were casting other women in this, in my same circle as well. So I was really, after all of that, I really got on board and I was like, you know what, this could be a really fun journey. It's just, I think it really is all about how you make it, you know? It really is. It really is. I mean, listen, if you say it or do it, it will be held against you, right? So you truly do have control of yourself. What you don't have control of is the editing or like what the other girls are going to come into the scene and say to you or come to the restaurant and say to you, but you do have control of how you react. So that's what's always kept me calm throughout the years because a lot of times things will get thrown at me and I'm like, it really doesn't matter what anyone walks in the room and says to me, it matters how I answer it. Right. And how I handle it. So really you do have the control if you think about it, because you do like that. You can, anyone could say anything to you, just like they can write anything on the internet, but you control how you're going to answer that and how you're going to handle that. And that keeps me, help, that makes me sleep better at night. Just if you keep that mind frame, it will help you get through and it won't keep you like, cause a lot of people stress out with this. Like it is stressful. It's you know, you know you're stressful. walking into the lion's den. I feel like your show probably hasn't gotten there yet. And hopefully it never will. I hope it stays a little bit lighter like it is. Um, and you guys fight over cheese and, and stuff like that, but you know, we're new, it, we're new. So, you know, you're it, new. It, keep it, fighting it, over the petty, cheese. Trust it's me. petty stuff. It's petty stuff for us, but no, that's really good words of advice because it's true. It's a very stressful show. And sometimes you say things, especially me, I have diarrhea of the mouth and I'm very, I'm brutally honest. I say exactly what it is that I'm thinking. And sometimes I'm like, did that come off mean? Or did that come off in a yes. way? And you start second guessing everything that you're saying, but I don't necessarily mean to be malicious. I'm just, I'm saying what people are thinking at the end of the day. I really do say what people are thinking. And some people just don't have the guts to say it. And um, I'm trying to like, now, now that the show is out. But that makes a great housewife side. That makes a great (laughs) housewife. That's what we all want you to do. Say what we're all thinking and just blurt it out and apologize for it later. (laughs) I mean, you know, that makes, that makes a golden housewife, right? It's true. It's true. It's true. But I, I'm like trying to live my life with no regrets over here. I'm YOLO. So it is what it is. Okay. Well, well, that's good. I mean, what, what are your biggest challenges? Like, what have you, have you faced anything yet where you're like, I really don't like this or like, I'm not feeling this part about it or what don't you really like about it? Um, or was there any like surprises that you were like, wow, this is not how I thought it was going to go or how production, like, is there anything weird that you never knew? I think I'm so used to creating content and, and doing my own YouTube channel and stuff like that. I'm, I'm fine with the filming. I, I, it does get a little bit taxing after a while. Like you are exhausted and you you do have like a good three months of filming that becomes, and I'm a very cranky moody person, so I can go up and down. And um, I think that became a little taxing after a while, but I, for me, Nothing was very surprising. The only thing that I think I was a little uncomfortable and hesitant about at first was really showing my husband, just because my husband has not been shown on my social media, that it was like, I'm opening up this door to not just me, but like my marriage, which I find to be no one's business. But at the same time, I just signed up for this to be everyone's business. I know that's the worst part. How is David taking it? Is he enjoying this? Is he, you know what? He's, he's pretty good. He watches no episodes, zero. Oh, he hasn't watched one episode yet. He's not watched one. I was like, Oh, just FYI. People think you're hot. He was like, that's nice. Like he's, (sighs) He has not watched one. He has no social media platforms. So he doesn't even Ooh, have a love it. Page. This is an A plus husband. That's like, awesome. He's not on social. And I think he only sees stories. Like, you know, Us Weekly will do like the craziest stories. Like I was lining right. my lips the other day in the back of the car and it was like a headline. Right. And so Yahoo picked it up and it was like on CNN. So that's the only way he sees. It was like Yahoo uh-huh. Sports under the like, on Damn, CNN. there's my yes. wife. Putting on her lipstick. He's like, what is happening? (laughs) But that's that's how he gets his news. Otherwise, he he doesn't know what's going on with the show. Like he's removed him. He's on it, but then he's removed himself at the same time. Which is quite refreshing. 
I think so. I have to be honest. I think it's better. I think it's better. He doesn't have to deal with, it's going to be definitely better for your marriage because if he was the type that was reading the comments and reading all of these things, it might stress him out when they say negative things about you. I'm sure he'll love all the positive, but if they say anything negative, it's going to stress him out and he's going to look at you right. like, what are you doing? Why are we doing this? Why did you open yourself to this? And now he doesn't even, he could sleep good at night. So it's better that he doesn't get social media. You know, yeah, no, I'm really, I'm happy about it. Is that what happened with you too? Like, was that a thing in your household? Oh my God. Well, Joe and I both kind of, our show is like completely different. He's just as uh, yeah. like on this show as I am. Cause it's a total different thing. So no, I love both, Joe though. Joe's great. Yeah, he's the best. He's a big teddy bear, honestly. Well, I don't know how big he is, but he's a teddy bear. He, um, <laughs> he's big. Like, you know, he's got big yeah, muscles. Yeah, and all I that. got that. But he's really, he has such a big heart. He's like the best guy. He really is. He's just like, and he's fun. So it works for the show because he's like, you know, always the fun guy on the show. Always wears his heart on his sleeve, like spilling it out every mouth that he can he's because really it's just guy. you could tell yeah you could tell he's, he's a really sweet guy yeah he's aces all the way I always say that I'm like he's better than me he's the I love sweetest that you're glowing nice. you're yeah. glowing when you talk about him so that's I, great I am I know that's because we just got back from Italy on like a honeymoon so you know I still like him today I like it I'm into it yeah it I still really like it on you how old are your kids my daughter's gonna be 12 next month my son is six Okay. So I have a 12, well, no, he just turned 13 and you have a six-year-old and are they understanding that mommy's on TV now or what's going on with that? I think it's a day and like, it's normal. But my daughter was like, is my career going to take off? Like, you know, I want to be an actress. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I think it's fun. Right. They, they think, think it's, it's fun. fun. They're having a really good time. My son could care less. Like he's he, right. He minds his own business, but my daughter thinks it's great. They They're fine with it. It's funny when I joined the show, I mean, my, my littlest, well, my 12, my 13 year old was born on the show. We'd had his christening, but once he got a little older, I want to say like six, he was on one of his social platforms at the time. I don't even think the kids use it anymore though. It was, I forget what it was called, but he was like, Hey guys, it's me, Joey (laughs) from the housewives, you know, because I'm all like fancy like that and like famous <laughs> like that i'll never forget him six years old like talking to his fans or Is something like on snapchat or something uh, it wasn't doing? snap it was like fanly at the t- i forget what it was it was like it was in and out for a minute this one little app that was like every all the young kids were into and i laughed i never oh my god it was so funny i'll never forget that um but he are so he, funny I mean, he's truly a kid who grew up on TV. So all my kids really are. So it's kind of like, it's a little different situation. So I always wonder what it's like being an established child that understands and then like saying, wait, now we're going to be on TV. Like, is that a weird thing? You know, I don't know. My son seems to be unbothered at all times. Like he just looks unbothered when we're filming. He's got like his hands behind his head on his iPad. He's so unbothered. The only time he's not into it is if you come in his room while he's sleeping and he wakes up to cameras, which I try not to do um, because it scares them, right? It startles them. But other than that, he's really just an unbothered child. Oh, good. That, that's that's bad. I feel like my boys are too, though. Other Like they want nothing. The, the cameramen are like walking around. They're like, like they're not even like paying attention to right. them half the time. It they, becomes normal. It just becomes the norm after a while. Yeah, they could care less. They like leave and they'll go in the room and shut the door. I'm like, okay, bye. You know. See ya. See you later. Guys, let me take a moment to tell you about this money saving app called Rocket Money. Are your subscriptions draining your wallet? The average person has about 12 paid subscriptions and they might not even remember subscribing to half of those. I know I never remember. If you have no idea just how much you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. It's a great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money's going. There's subscriptions for everything these days, from streaming services to fitness programs, and sometimes it feels impossible to keep tabs on what you're paying for every month. That's why I'm such a fan of Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money also recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, and they'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limits. 
With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash on display. That's rocketmoney.com slash on display. Rocketmoney.com slash on display. On Display with Melissa Gorga is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even just grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else that you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $700 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and so much more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings on $698 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. As far as your castmates go, I know there's Bryn, there's Uba. Um, who am I missing? There's Jenna. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Just Aaron, Bryn, Uba, Jenna, Aaron, Jessel, Jessel. How do you Je- say her? Jessel. Jessel. Yeah. Okay. There's Jessel. Who do you, who did you hit it off with the most or who did you know going into this? I actually knew no, no one going in. Oh, okay. Yeah. None of us actually knew of each other. Well, we knew of one another, but we didn't Right. But have, nobody was like, like bestie type yeah, situation. Yeah. None of us were best friends. Okay. So, um, going in, I think I got really close with Bryn the fastest, I think the quickest her and I, and Aaron and I got along really, really well, very quickly too. Um, I kind of related a lot to Bryn just because of her background and her, like just her, her upbringing, right. you know, starting She's so cute. Beginnings. I like yeah. her a lot. She She's seems a fun girl. Um, but I'm trying to figure out. And then Uba, Uba's, she just has all this energy. That's insane to me. Like so for someone to have this much energy, they don't drink. They don't do anything else. Like it's just a natural energy from day to night. I don't understand it. I see that. She just oozes like nice, happy vibes, good she's vibes. A positive vibes. She's she's good until she's not. Like if you poke her, she's not okay. Oh, see now that I can't wait for because I cannot even imagine. First of all, she's stunning, but I couldn't even imagine her getting mad. Does she get yeah. mad this season? Just tell she- me now. She doesn't just get mad. She goes crazy. No. <laughs> Which Uba's a zero to a hundred. There's no in between. So she's sweet and nice and everything. But when you piss her off, there is no middle. It's just hundred. Oh my very, God. I can't wait for that. It's very hard to bring her down. It takes a very like days to bring you her down. You have to really piss her off. Oh, I can't wait. Really, yeah. You have to really poke her. Otherwise, I mean, she's super sweet. She's very tall. So she constantly picks me up. She picks me up on a regular basis. Just for context, she's about, I think she might be 5'11 or 6 feet. And she wears heels on top of it. So she's probably running around like 6'4". Of course. Uh, I'm 5'4 with no shoes on. And it's... So am I. I'm 5'4 with no shoes on. So on a good day, we're like 5'7". Right, right. right? So she's constantly picking me up like I'm an infant toddler child. And (laughs) it's got... It's It's like throwing you around. Constantly. Every time she sees me, she needs to pick me up. And I'm like, oh, but I have on a dress. Like, not today. Like, please don't do it. But it's just pick me up like I'm a rag doll today. Thank you. (laughs) Unbelievable. I actually went on the ultimate girls trip with Kenya Moore and we had like a tug of war once and she threw me around like I was a damn (laughs) rag doll. She used her ass, 
everything. She was just like, I was like, what? I went flying across oh the beach. <laughs> I could imagine. I met Kenya on Watch What Happens Live and she's tall. She's very, she very tall. She is so tall. Yes, she's so I, tall. I feel like my cast, I'm, I actually am the shortest out of my cast. Everyone Are you? Is, yeah, I feel like Erin's everyone... not crazy tall either, right? I'm trying to But think. I think she's still maybe 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, oh, wow. Five, okay, five, seven, five, eight. Yeah. yeah. So without shoes, she's still pretty tall. It, it, yeah, at the end of the day, when they all wear heels, I still am like, what's going on here? I know. Where did, where did you ladies come from? Trust Jenna me, girl, too. I'm in your boat. I'm I'm five four as well. Okay. So well, uh, I'm saying, right gang? in your boat with that. Um, what any hints as to what made her go crazy? Um Is it a certain person on the cast? I mean, I feel like it was in the trailer. Like, I think oh, was, was it? Of, okay. Yeah, See, I, I didn't think... watch. You know what's so funny? I didn't watch. Oh, I did watch the trailer, but I don't remember that. I, I've just been watching the show. But... I think, I, I mean, I don't, the thing about the trailer is it's such a fast clip that I don't think anyone realizes who made her mad. Got it. All right. So we won't give away any, any spoilers. Yeah, we can't really give away any spoilers, but it was when we went away on a trip. And okay. I think, I think that's when shit hits the fan is when you go away on a trip. Every, all, all of your personalities start clashing or you're just with each other too long. Trips are trips are crazy. Like you really realize on a trip, like, do I really want to travel with this person? You know, it's a lot that goes on. People got all kinds of icks and things about them that are you need space on a trip. And when you're filming, you're filming a lot. You're like it's 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 24 seven, 24 seven. So. I think, and they catch that every move, that every eye, that every eye roll, you know, <laughs> everything. Well, that's it's, the thing. You're like with these girls for way too long. And then on yeah. top of it, you're not only with them, what people don't realize, you also have a cast and crew, right? Yeah. So there's also the cameramen, the producers, the PAs, there's this in your room, that in your room. So like you're constantly talking to someone or yeah. someone's asking you a question and it's it does get just like on, you get frustrated in general. You're just like, how long until we can get out of here? It's yeah, like, it's not it's not really a vacation. I don't think people realize it's not. A, a, I'm not I'm not relaxing. Let's just say that it's I don't not, feel I relaxed. I'm not feeling relaxed. I guess it's great that I'm hanging out with the girls. It's super cool. But I'm not I'm not leaving that trip feeling like, wow, I had a nice relaxing trip. vacation. No, I need a vacation from the vacation. Usually, of course, it's never a relaxing trip. I mean, sometimes you'll get lucky and there'll be like a night or two that like when the cameras go down, you girls actually sat down and like had a glass of wine or sat yes. by a fire or and then That's you're like, all right, nice. I'm, I'm cool right now. Like I'm enjoying this, you know, that but is nice. the tensions are high on cast trips. You know what else I found crazy about your show? Most of you, are you one of them that does not drink? No, I drink. I'm a drinker. You drink. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw like three or four girls say they don't drink, right? I think it's just Jenna and Uba that don't drink. I think oh, everyone else. Oh, it was else... just the two of them? I feel like. I mean, it's only there was... six of us. So it, that leaves four of us left. I think the four of us, Bryn, me, Aaron, Jessica. Yeah, we drink. Four you guys of us drink. drink. Two of us Okay. Drink. Well, that's not that bad. We have Margaret who does not drink on ours. Okay. I think that's it though. Um, I thought there was multiple and I'm like, wow, how is that going to go? Like sober dealing with all of these people all the time because I, I don't like- know how Jenna deals with us because when we start drinking we get I mean we get a little bit you know boisterous we're a little bit we're, we're fine we're rowdy um and then Uba matches our energy because she's naturally like that so yes. it's like sometimes I'm like I'm actually happy you don't drink Uba because I could not imagine you tipsy and have this much Still energy being you yeah. I say that about Margaret Margaret can match my energy in a club like on like she can stay out as late as everyone she'll dance and I'm like you haven't had one cocktail yet I it's love like, that it's insane she she's she can go all night on a cappuccino I'm like I love free. Margaret she's great I did a podcast I did her podcast too and I, she's really great I know how did you like her she was nice she's awesome I love Margaret yeah. do you um did you watch Jersey before you I were housewife? I watched I watched Jersey for a while until you know Teresa gets a little crazy but um I watched it for a while until I think let's see I stopped watching when it got a little dark it did get a little dark for me as yeah. like yeah you know, some of the arguments were a little bit tough like the family breaking up was a little tough for me yes because I feel like Italians have this Italians are about family they're about 
elderly, you're about babies and you're about family. Like it's just the world to you guys. So I think around that time when things just really started to split up, I was not, I guess I was disappointed. I was a little disappointed. I was like, come on guys. How do we fix it? You're like, this? get your shit together. Get, your, get together guys. Kumbaya. How do we fix it? Um, so I think I stopped watching around that, but I'm going to pick it back up. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play on DraftKings Casino. Play online, on your time, in your space, and within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code GORGA. And new customers will get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code GORGA. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAM-BLER. Please play responsibly. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Must be 21 years or older. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. You think Vanderpump Rules is messy now? It's always been messy. I'm Jax Taylor, the OG Pump Rules villain. And I'm Brittany Cartwright, wife of the OG villain. And we've got a new podcast, When Reality Hits. We'll definitely be talking about Vanderpump Rules, past and present, and oh my, Scandaval. Ugh. And you'll get a look at what life is like for us now as we figure out marriage and parenthood. Little cruisy. And friendships and definitely feuds. It's our real reality, with and without cameras. And sometimes with special guests like our celeb friends, former castmates, and other veterans of reality TV. So listen to and follow When Reality Hits with us, Jax Taylor and Brittany Cartwright. At Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Well, anyway, back to your show. Is there anyone on the cast who, like, surprised you the most? Is there anybody who were like, wow, this one's a wild card. Like, I did not expect her to be this way. Or just did something that really surprised you? Um, hmm. Jessel's hysterical. I think Jessel, Jessel was surprising in the fact that she complains a lot, but doesn't realize that she does complain. Like she's not a malicious person. She's very sweet. She's actually a very nice person, but she really doesn't get the things that she says sometimes. Like she doesn't understand that sometimes complaining about a gift could be offensive because she didn't really understand her, her delivery Right. And I think, delivery is everything. So, yeah. Yes. So I think playing it back, she saw it. Um, let's see. Bryn, when I first met Bryn, I knew she was the fun girl. Like she is a fun party going out girl, but I didn't spending so much time with her. It got to the point that it was just like, I just needed Bryn to come down from being the fun party girl sometimes. Got like, it. You know what I mean? Like, let's just like, like you wanted to dig in deep a little bit once in yeah, a while and be like, yeah. what else do you do? What else goes on over what here? What else is going on there? I think so. Th- I think her and I just started so fast and furious that at, towards the end, I was just, I don't know. I was just like, Brent, I needed to break like a little bit from her. And um, I think everyone else, Jenna's very much so herself, Uba, Uba's so sweet and kind. You can't really get right. mad at her. At who do you think had day. the hardest time this season? Like who, cause listen, every season, I feel like yeah. there's one cast member that was like, wow, that was rough for them. Right. Do you think there's a person that probably had that this season? 
you know what, but we're only five episodes in. I feel like it's going to twist and turn. It does. Uh, you know what? It can start off one way and end a total different way. So yeah, I think we're going to twist and turn. I think I started out with all the jokes and no one understood the jokes. I think <sighs> people were like, she's just like a complainer or she's mean or she's this. And I'm like, right. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, guys, are you picking up what I'm putting like, down? Hello, like, are we getting it? Like, this is pure comedy right now. I'm dropping comedic bombs. Yeah. And I'm over here laughing. I was like, oh my God, I'm so funny. And then I read the, like, well, I don't, I, I actually don't read the internet at all, but my friends get very defensive and they send me things. And they're like, they don't understand you're joking. So you know what, who cares? Yeah. So I think that started off like that until I opened up a little bit. And then I think Jessel is getting a little bit of slack from the complaining. I think, she, but I think for her, it's going to switch soon. It, it keeps moving. It'll keep I think moving. It keeps, I, think I it use moves. it like everyone gets their episode where they're like, damn, I really looks like an ass in that episode. Or like, you know, or, or not even that you look like an ass. Like they just didn't get you. They weren't understanding where you were coming from or whatever it is. It's so but true. It changes. Never it harp changes. on it because it just switches the next week. You know, it's it basically. It changes per episode. At first, yeah. when it first dropped, I was like getting anxiety before it aired. And I was like, oh God, what am I like? What am I going to look like? What did what I do? Are, what am I going to say? Because it's true. When you're filming, you kind of forget. Like it, it, everything moves so quickly that you kind of forget what happened or what you did, especially when you're out of the filming zone. Like For once sure. you're done and you're wrapped, like I was ghost. I'm like back to my regular life. I'm ghost. I'm going to move on, have my family, do fashion month, all the things. Um, so I completely forgot some of these scenes. And then when I watched them, I was like, oh, shit, I forgot I said that. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. I wore that. like, you know what I mean? Um, but it happens again, to me all the time. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know if anybody's getting it quite yet because we're still very new. But ask me, ask me when the season is over after the I will. Well, you're going to come back on, you know, after the season's over and then we're going to we're going to go over it again. I know that you said on Watch What Happens Live that you had a bump in with Ramona and she was not so pleasant. What happened? OK, so I, all right. I'm going to tell the whole story because <clears throat> so, I know Andy's kind of like quick. He's like, oh, what, what? and he moves to the next subject like. When he's on Watch What Happens Live, he's barely listening to you because he's listening to, I always giggle at this. <laughs> you think he's talking to you, but he's not. He's talking to the people in his ears and he's like, you know, you get a two second thing and then it go, it moves on. So go ahead, explain. He's so good at it. He's really good at it. He's um, got it down to like a, a science. A science, you know? right? Yeah. So I saw Ramona, we were at Art Basel. I decided that I wanted to walk up to her and introduce myself. I was like, why not? Right. You know, she paved the way for me. Right. I'm, the, I'm the newcomer. We're being respectful. It's like I'm, you're the younger sister, whatever it is, like, you know, I'm, coming I'm up. I'm just being respectful. Right. So I was like, hi, Ramona. And she gives me this look and was like, yes, yes. <sighs> like, like it was very dismissive immediately. Like I was like, and she probably didn't even know who you were at first. No. And I, I didn't expect her to know who I was, but I didn't expect her to be so dismissive as soon as I said, hi, are you Ramona? You know? Right. You know? And I said, oh no, I don't want to bother you. I said, I just want to introduce myself. I was like, I'm Sai. I'm on the new cast of Roni. And then she looks at me up and down and she was like, well, good luck, honey. You're going to need it. And okay. I was like, oh, Okay. And then she oh brought her, gosh. and then the conversation continued though. She brought her friend and was like, ah, ha, ha. she's laughing. She was like, this is the new girl. She's on Roni. And then they're like, oh, you look like a nice girl. You look like you're too nice. Her friend <sighs> says, and I was like, oh, okay. And then she goes, you know what? Stay right there. Let me do a story of you. So she takes her phone. She starts doing a story. She says something. I laugh because I'm uncomfortable. I'm you're like, at this point, you're like, I don't know what's happening, but okay. yeah, I'm very uncomfortable. And I was like, uh -huh, okay. And then she goes, here, honey, here's my number. And she takes my phone. And then she sent the, she sent, no, no, no. The, when she, when she put the story on, the story went in, I responded and said, nice to meet you. That was it. It was the nice thing to do. And then after that, I didn't speak to her ever again. I was like, that was so fucking weird. It was, I was so uncomfortable. She that never, sounds really, really awkward, but it's it also was, Ramona's It was an awkward, way. I don't think she was being a bitch on purpose. I think that's her personality. 
I it is. And I think that she doesn't know. Yes. I, I, she probably didn't know how to like handle it, that she was meeting. You were probably one of the first ones she met. I'm going to assume. I don't know. And she probably just didn't know like how to handle the whole situation, but it sounds very awkward. Yeah. It sounds yeah, like, I mean, like, it was just a very weird, awkward. And again, I thought she was really being a bitch, but I, and now looking back like that, I think that's just her personality. And also she started inviting me to her daughter's thing after like a, like a month later. And that's when I was on watch what happens live. And I was like, I never responded. I didn't respond to any of these messages. Like who would respond after someone treats you so weird. Right. So I actually never, I get it. You were like, right. I I was like, I left Ramona on red because I I never responded, but I think again, now thinking about it, like that's just her personality. She probably didn't think she was being rude to me at all. She just was probably like a new girl. Good luck to you. Like you're going to need it, honey. (laughs) <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I I have been in her presence many times when many times when it's just a little awkward. She's she admits it, though, like she's very like, you know, it, it's weird with the fans, but whatever. She probably doesn't have to deal with much. At, well, she still does, because now she's going to be on the ultimate girls trip, she's right? Gonna be but, on the ultimate girls trip. I don't I don't have any ill feelings towards Ramona whatsoever. And you know, well, what? it's good that you can like open your mind a little and realize that like it kind of just who she I think it is. is. Like, don't is. take it as like a uh, a dig. It's really just who she is, you know? So um, um, yeah, that was it. That was at least I got the whole story out. That was the whole story. It wasn't wasn't anything like dun 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 <laughs> it was just before weird, we talk about moment Go right ahead. well that's totally Ramona and that, have you met any of the other ones or that was it just Ramona I met Dorinda she was really nice I think She's sweet. She, yeah she was really nice you know she told me just be myself at the end of the day um she was great and I think I think that was about it oh you know what I met Leah I met Leah the other day in the Hamptons. Oh, Leah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's a doll too. She's very cool. Very down to earth, right? Yeah. She was chill. You know, she gave me some advice there and we just kind of like chatted just a bit. But um, other than that, I think that was about it. Okay. Well, before we switch topics to scout the city, because I want to know yeah. all about that. I want to ask you one thing about Bryn, because are you guys like arguing right now? Is everything okay? I know that there was like a little something with the circle of trust that went on in that situation. How are you guys doing right now? Um, we're not arguing, but we're not talking either. So okay. I think, um, I think, there's just, yeah, I think there's just something that's unresolved that needs to be resolved. And I'm pretty sure that would happen at the reunion. Um, right. And that's where we are right now. Right. So it's I don't have any ill feelings towards Bryn whatsoever, but I think we should discuss what happened and that eventually, unfortunately, will have to happen. I'm not a talker. Like I'm not someone who likes to sit and talk about my feelings and tell me like you hurt right. me because of whatever. I, yes. I, like, I don't do therapy. That's not my jam. <laughs> I'm not that girl. So the fact that I we know. even have to hash this out, it, it's annoying to me. Like, cause I just don't, at the end of the day, I'm like, whatever, give me some time. Maybe I'll get over it. I, I don't right. feel like I need to hash it out. But I think in this predicament, it, 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 we're going to you're going to hash it out the reunion for sure. That's that's how that goes. So, well, that'll be good. I mean, listen, the circle of trust is huge in this housewives world, by the way. Yeah. It's always about, you know, needing to know who you can trust. So I'm big. Like I think that's a huge that's a huge thing, you know, so you guys will hash it out. You'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, there's always that fun reunion day. Wait till you wait till you do that and have your first reunion. That's always so exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have so many notes that I have to come back and report back to. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Okay, guys, I have to tell you about Angie. It's your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done right. You know, like redoing something in your front yard because your husband doesn't want to do it for the fifth time. (laughs) Joe. Guys, I have been waiting for an app like this my whole life. You literally can find everything on there. Anyone who can fix anything from paint to electricians to landscaping, you name it, and you'll find someone to do it on this app. I think it's genius. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can just be so hard to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. 
Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or they can help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect you instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. This episode of On Display is brought to you by Post-It Brand. Post-It Brand helps people get ideas out of their head and out into the world. They believe in the power of writing it down since it's the spark of something bigger. I mean, personally, I have Post-Its everywhere, guys. They're all over my desk. They're all over Envy. I don't know what people do without a Post-It. The second I think about it, I write it down and I stick it right on my desk and then things don't get forgotten. Post-it super sticky notes feature two times the sticking power to ensure your message stays put. So when you're in a rush, you could just slap it on the board and you don't have to worry that it's going to be gone whenever you get back. 85% of parents believe you're more likely to achieve a goal if you write it down. And that includes me, guys. I tell my kids all the time to write it on a post-it and you will never forget. You know, even homework. So there are eight Post-It Super Sticky Note collections, so you can match them to your style and any color code if you want. Post-It notes are essential for organizing my life in a bold, colorful way. Find your favorite Post-It products at a local retailer today. Let's talk about Scout the City for a minute. I want to switch gears and talk about your lifestyle brand. Tell me about it. And before you do, I want to just interject here. It just came to me that someone DM'd me recently. And it's one of the fans that like I've known forever. It's like when you first start out, you get to know their name because they constantly DM you. And right. so it's a, it's a familiar like Instagram DMer, right? Fan. And she recently said like, you need to talk to Sai. She and Aww. I it's pop because she said something about Scout the City and she's doing it great and you need to do this with Envy. So what was she talking about? Tell me. I, I'm so curious to Is know. Is she talking about more like social? It's like the, I don't like know. I just remember media? Scout the City. She said mentioned you and she's like, you should like get into what she's doing. And I was like, what is she doing? So now you tell me what you're doing. <laughs> I, I, mean, I do a lot of influencer marketing at the end of the day. I, I, I I started out, so when I started, I started 10 years ago, right? And I started because my daughter, uh, she was born. I didn't have any friends who had kids. I lived in Montreal really briefly with my husband. That's where my daughter was born. Um, So I moved there for him. And I was like, this is not for me, honey. I got to move back to New York. And I remember I like, I started this whole blog just so I can meet other moms that were cool. I was like, are there any cool moms that still care about the way they look? You know, they still, you know, put together and and like want to go have a drink, a cocktail. Exactly. I don't feel like they collapse from the whole motherhood thing. Exactly. So that's what I was looking for. I ended up finding a great community and I started blogging and it was like a creative outlet for me. I had no idea that I can make money from it. I was just like, this is cool. Like I I can be creative, whatever. Long story short, I think nine months after I started Buzzfeed did an article on it that went viral. And it was the blog was about me and my daughter. And, um, and after it went viral, I did the today show. So that was back in like 2015. And, um, and then my first ever campaign was with Stella McCartney. And I remember they call me right, like six o'clock in the morning, because they're in London. And I had to pretend like I was up already. He's like, hi, yes, hi, how How are are you? you? (laughs) (laughs) And I was so excited. And they're like, we want to work with you. We're going to send you some clothes for you to shoot. You know, because I I produce all of the content, right? I have a photographer. I have a videographer. Like I'm the production company. So there's no need for me to hire elsewhere. I already have a team. And at that time, I was like, okay, great. Free clothes, Stella, like luxury, great. And then they're like, we'll also pay you. And I remember that moment I was like, oh shit, not only am I getting free clothes, but I'm also getting money. Like I didn't even negotiate the fee. I was like, like, whatever you got. Sure. Give it to me. It could be pennies. Like I'll take it. This is amazing. So they were my very, very first client. And then after that, I got an agent 
And, you know, what that entails is, you know, influencer marketing, you partner with different brands, they pay you to create this content. And at the end of the day, you're not really just shooting selfies. People think that you're just running around doing selfies, but you pick the wardrobe, you pick the location, you have to submit a concept. They give you a brief, you have deliverables. Right. So it's a job. It is a full-time job. Like things need to get approved before you go live. I can't just shoot something and say, oh, I love it. And then go live. And that's right. another thing I'll never get with a brand that I don't like. All the brands that I work with, I genuinely either will try or use. So I want something that is, yeah, just so there's loyalty behind the brand. So people trust me. So next time I'm doing an ad, you know, for a fact, like she either loves this and she's trying it and she's going to give it a try, or this is something she uses on a regular basis. Like I would never sell you McDonald's because I don't, I'm a vegetarian. I don't really, i a pescatarian. I don't eat meat and I don't really go to McDonald's. So it's, right. you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think there needs to be some sort of loyalty with your brand and your fans really do. Your community really needs to trust you. So I've been doing that for 10 years and then um, now taking on a podcast, which is going to be great. I'm doing it with my best friend. It's just going to be like life in your forties and what that looks like. Awesome. It's called, yeah. It's going to be great. What's so the name of that going to be? It's called harder than we thought because life is harder than we thought, but it's a funny one. It's going to be like all the funny, it's going to be me pre-marriage and like sex days and like dating and how that looks like. Cause my friend, she, her name is Angela. She's like this super um, um, crazy entertainment attorney. And then I'm this, you know, freelance TV personality influencer. So we have completely different lives and she's not married, but I'm married, but I'm so interested in her single life. I'm constantly like, who you did? It is. It's, it's good it's, because you get a little married life. You get a little single life. You get a little bit of both, right? You get all of How old are you? Do you mind I'm me 40, asking? 42, 42. 42. Okay. So life in the forties. I love it. Yeah. It's going to be life in 40. So it's going to be great, but that is kind of how my brand evolved over the years. And that's where I am now. So I still do fashion month and getting ready to gear up for fashion month next month. Actually, I do that maybe about two or three times a year. Cause sometimes I do couture too, but I create content for a living. And listen, you have a great eye for fashion. You've worked with some big names like Tom Ford, Fendi, Dior, yeah. right? You've yeah. just to name a few. So that's pretty that's impressive for being able to do all of that. Who is your favorite brand to work with? Uh, I have a few. I love the Italian brands, Max Mara, Sport Max. I love Sport Max. I think Sport Max is like under the radar here in the States, but really take a look at it. It's a very cool brand. Um, Dior is always so great to work with. Fendi is amazing to work with. Um, I, I, I just have so many that I that I, I you're like, I was, they're one. all good, you right? Know, I mean, guys, they're all good. They're all luxurious. Get them all. Bring it on. <laughs> it's great. Everybody. And send me gifts too. Don't forget um, the gifts. <laughs> you've also been a fashion correspondent, right? Um, for today, today Vogue, W Magazine, yes. um, and quite a few others with fall around the corner. Okay. This is my last question to you. What are some fall looks that you love and that, you know, we're going to see and that you want to see, you know, what that is, is out right now that I really could not understand if I was on, on or off of it, but it's ballet flats. And it's not like the Chanel ballet flats, but it's like oh. all the, the Mew Mew ballet flat. Aliyah has a ballet flat. It's because I'm a short girl. I do like my sandals in the summer, but the ballet flat with the with the oversized denim jean, I was like, am I into this? Cause I'm already short. So I'm just going to stay short, but I, I like it guys. I think I really do like it. I think it's here. It's going to be here for a moment. People are going to wear ballet flats and socks this fall. Trust me. Wow. <laughs> People love a sock. I I'm love a seeing sock. that. You know what else is everywhere right now? The big flowers, the roses, the flowers, they're it's on everything. Flowers, I don't know man. if they're going to keep going for fall, but they took over our whole entire summer is like the floral people with the shirts that are literally just a big flower right oh, yeah, that's you're like about all the all the magda flower like the flower on the bikinis and all of yes, those flower app yes. applique embellishments the ones that are on your boobs they're like covering your vagina <laughs> they're, covering, they're everywhere just the flower everywhere um well listen I don't want to wear flats I really want to wear a heel you know what this reminded me of I used to have every little flat in America the ballet flats were so in I want to say when I first married Joe like 2004 2005 2006 I think I had every brand of like flat that had the little 
emblem, the Gucci emblem. This and they emblem. laced up too. They yes, have, like, I'm like, like a... wait, those are coming back. Oh. They are definitely back. They're here for a moment, and I think almost every single brand has their own version of them. So you can kind of pick. All right, pick well, I have choose. to like prep for that because I don't really feel like wearing flats ever. I, I mean, know, right? in the summer I wear them. I'm a big sandal girl and flip flops, but in the summer, but like in the fall and the winter, I need a little, little something. You need a little umph. I think it's us. I think it's our, our height. I think that's the deal. Yeah. We need something extra. We do. Sorry, this has been so much fun. I'm so glad that you're enjoying being part of Roni, the new Roni. I'm a, truly a fan. I watch Thank it you. and I don't Thank watch you. all the housewife franchises. I truly watch it. I really love it. I wish you so much success. I hope everything just grows for you more, more, more. Everybody make sure and follow Sai and scout the city on Instagram. Yes. Sai, thank you again. Thank and you, we are going to regroup after you're really down and dirty and did a reunion. We, we're we going to regroup and hopefully I see you sometime in the city or something. Yes, soon. let's grab drinks. I would love that. We're going to have drinks in the city. How's that? Okay, we'll have drinks in the city. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, thank you. It was nice to meet you. We'll you talk too, soon. You too. All right. Bye, bye honey. biggest blockbusters this summer with popcorn summer movies on Pluto TV. Indulge in hilarious rom-coms like The Backup Plan or delve into award-winning dramas like Forrest Gump and Minari with thousands of other free movies. Pluto TV has something for everyone. Available on live TV and on demand. Download Pluto TV on all your favorite devices and start streaming now.